Welcome to lesson 23 from module 4. What we're taking a look at today is something that's called scale factors. Um, and here what you can see is that it says scaling factors. So a scale factor is telling you by how much is something getting bigger or smaller. So yesterday we kind of looked at it and we had fractions and we multiplied by, for example, um, three-fourths compared to if we multiplied it by four-thirds. That if you multiplied by four-thirds, we know that that's top-heavy, so it's kind of upside down. So it's more than one, and our number got bigger. It got bigger by one and a third. If we multiplied by three-fourths, then it got smaller by that one-fourth. So what we're looking at today is actually with decimals. And so on these ones, so this is the homework part of it. If you have three and six hundredths, what can you multiply that by out of these three choices right here? What can you multiply it by that will get you an answer that is smaller than three and six hundredths? And so on. So we're going to learn about comparing these and seeing what we can do. So on this one right here, this says sort the following expressions by rewriting them in the table. And to save time, I'm not actually going to rewrite. What I'm going to do is just kind of draw arrows to show you where they should go. So this box right here, the product, the result of the multiplication, is less than the box number. And then the other one, it's that it's going to get bigger than what you started with in the box number. So this one, if you look at this, and you know that 12 times 1, 12 and 5 tenths times 1 is going to eat it for 12 and 5 tenths. Well, 1 and 9 tenths is almost 2. So that's actually going to double that. So that one is going to go over here because it's going to get almost doubled. So it's going to definitely get greater than. Now let's take a look at this one. This one right here, the box number, we've got 7 thousandths, and we're multiplying it by one and two hundredths. So that also two is going to get bigger, just a really tiny amount bigger. It's going to get two hundredths bigger than it was, but it's definitely getting bigger. This one, we've got 828, and we're multiplying by something that is just slightly less than one whole. So it's going to get smaller by that one tenth. Because if we're at 9 tenths, it's going to get it smaller by 1 tenth. So this one is going to go over here. It's going to get less. This one right here, 2 and 16 hundredths. We're multiplying by 1 and 11 hundredths. It's this 11 hundredths more than 1. It's going to make this number get 11 hundredths bigger than what it was. Oops, sorry. Guess what I did? I just goofed that up. So grab my eraser here. Erase, erase, erase. And then we'll try again. Let me grab my pencil again. This one is going to get bigger. So it's going to land over here. Whoops, sorry about that. Same with this one because it's going to get 26 hundredths bigger than 1. Because it's 1 and 26 hundredths bigger because it's that much. This one right here is going to get smaller. Um, because if we're only multiplying it by one tenth, so it's going to be one tenth of what it was. It's going to get smaller. So do you kind of see the pattern here? You look at the scale factor, what you're multiplying by, that tells you if it's going to get bigger or littler. So what do these expressions in each column happen to have in common? So on the left side, versus the right side, right side. On the left side, what's happening is multiplying by scale factor by a scale factor less than 1. And then on the other side, I'm going to make that as an equal sign there, is equal to multiplying by scale factor that is greater than 1. 
that's how they differ so when you're comparing and now let's take a look at the very next one it says write a statement using one of the following phrases to compare the value of these expressions and then explain how you know so what we have happening in this one is 14 times one one thousandth shy of one, right? If this nine became a 10, it's gonna overflow to this one, which is gonna overflow to this one, which is gonna overflow to this one. It's gonna become actually a whole. So that is one one thousandth shy of one. So it's gonna get slightly less than as big as it was. So 14 times that is going to be slightly less than 14. This one, if we take a look at this, this is one we're saying times two. So that's doubling it. So that's going to be if we've got, well, actually, this is the number we're looking at this time, not the first number. Because see that right here? One and one one hundredth more than this. So one one hundredth bigger than if we just multiplied by one. So this is going to get slightly larger, is slightly more than the two and six hundredths that we started with. And then this last one we have, here's the number we're analyzing. If we take 1,955 and we multiply it by 19 thousandths, we're saying, what is 19 thousandths of this? That's going to be a very small part of it. So that means it's going to be a lot, is a lot less than what you started with. That's an E. Okay. Less than 1,955. It's going to go really a lot smaller. Um, so let's take a look right here. We'll take a look at this one right here, number four. Circle your choice. And we're analyzing this one right here where it says A times B is going to be greater than A. So in that case, for this statement to be true, B then, it's A is going to become bigger than what it started. That means that B has to be greater than 1 to multiply. Write in ex two expressions to support your answer. Be sure to include one decimal example. So we could say in that case that if we have a five and we multiply it by a two, that it's going to be bigger than what we started with. It's gonna be bigger than a five. And then if we turn this into a decimal version of it, we could say that if we take a three and we multiply it by a one and one tenth, that it's going to end up bigger than three because it'll be one tenth larger. If we say just one times it, we get our three. But if we say one tenth higher than that, we're going to end up with something that's truly bigger by a little bit than three. So let's go ahead and take a look back at that exit ticket I showed you at the beginning. So this one, what it's giving you right here is three pieces that you're going to put into these blanks here. So this one, it's saying three and six hundredths, and you want to make it into something that's less than three and six hundredths. So what would you multiply by up here? You pick one. Which one would you multiply by to make it less than that? This one right here is it's going to end up actually equal to it. It's not going to change, so you choose one. This one right here, it's going to get bigger than 89 hundredths. What must you have multiplied it by to get bigger than what you started with? All right, so I would like you to do just that one problem, all three sections, A, B, and C. So what you could do is just say A, and then which one of these would you put in the blank? For A, which one of these for B, which one for C, so on. Sound good? See you tomorrow.